Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Come on, if you're putting everything in his hands, you ought to get on your feet right now and give God glory. Come on, I need to grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, all of my problems, all of my situations, all of my heartache, all of my pain, yes, I, I put it all in his hands. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Come on, open your mouth and give God glory. Come on, say, yes, I put it on. Come on, yes, I put it on. Every problem, every situation, every circumstance, every ism, every schism, I'm going to put it all in his hands. Somebody shout glory. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes you got to learn how to put it in his hands. Somebody shout glory. You know, what happens is we try to put everything in our own hands. And we've been messing up stuff because we get in God's way. But we got to learn how to put it all. Look at somebody say all of it. All of it. Come on, say don't, not, not some of it. Not some of it. All of it. All of it. We got to learn how to put all of it in his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song said no matter how great or small. He said that he's the master of it all. And we got to learn how to put it all in his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of y'all experienced some things that only God's hand could be able to fix it? You know, some folks get stressed out over stuff they can't even handle. Why do people get upset and fight, cry, over stuff they can't even handle. You can't even fix it. Why bother with it? That's right. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, some stuff we just can't fix. And if you can't fix it, ain't no need to try to get in God's way and try to fix it for him. And then we'll start praying and then start worrying. Yeah, it's true. I was always taught that if you're going to worry, ain't no need to pray. Oh, well, yeah, I'm talking to somebody here. Sometimes we get worried, I mean, we worry ourselves to death over stuff that we can't even handle, stuff that you can't even fix. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got somebody say, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. But leave it in God's hands. Leave it in God's hands. Amen. We do appreciate the Lord tonight for this afternoon. Amen. God has been good to us and is worthy. Amen. To be praised. Hallelujah. We do honor him and praise him for being our God. Hallelujah. We honor him and appreciate him. Hallelujah. For just being the king over our lives. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our general overseer, Apostle C.A. Coward. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the Board of Bishops, Presiding Bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod. Amen. Our overseer of our new North District, Overseer Kevin Williams. Amen. We thank God for him. And all of, amen. Give me some volume. Uh, all of the men of God that make up our district. Amen. We appreciate God for them. Pastor Nixon Philliston, Pastor Gavin McCullough, Pastor Daniel Fields, our district elder. Amen. All of the pastors, Pastor Tillman. Amen. Pastor Van Beaverhout, Pastor Strong, Pastor Griffin. Every last one of them, we thank God for them. Amen. Thank God for you and you and you. Amen. All of our visitors and guests, God bless you. You may be seated. Today I want to, amen, talk about a relationship. Amen. And how the relationship with God requires a change. And it's not, amen, uh, you know, sometimes we say maybe, you know, we could change. But I'll tell you something. Every relationship you ever get in your entire life, there's going to be something that you change by the way of the other person. If you get married to a woman, amen, and you, her husband, say, I like your hair curly, and she like it straight. 
because of the relationship and because she loves you, she's going to wear it curly and not straight because of you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you say, baby, I like how you wear this, or baby, I like how you wear that, what happens is she changes based upon the relationship true. and the love that she has for you. Amen. True. Amen. You say, hey, honey, I don't like when we get on Highway 16 and you're driving all fast like that and switching through lanes. If you love her, you say, okay, baby, I, you know, I'll wait till you go to sleep. And then <laughs> 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 so what happens is it requires, relationship requires change. To be honest, you're not even going to be you anymore once you get in that relationship. Because you become more like the person that you're with. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So if there's a relationship, and also, you know, I, I don't know about you, but when you're in a relationship with someone, you have certain languages and certain things that y'all do that show signs of I love you and I appreciate you. Amen. Certain things that you'll do to show your spouse that you love them. Amen. Amen. And if you ain't doing that, you got a problem. Amen. If y'all mar y'all married, I'm mean, have a meeting with all y'all married folk, but y'all should be doing stuff for each other to show that you love them. It got real quiet. Y'all all right? It, it's it's required because when you enter into that relationship, Amen. Once you enter that relationship, those changes are required, and sometimes those changes take place evasively. Some of it you don't even, you know, do on purpose. Y'all start talking the same way. Y'all start having the same languages and all those different things like that based upon relationship. So it is with God. When you come to God, there are some necessary changes, and you can't be afraid of the changes. Amen. Because, some, you know, one of the, one, one of the uh, things that I realize about people is that we're afraid of change. True. Amen. That's why sometimes, you know, you, they, they say you can take you can take somebody out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of them. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Ain't what happens is, I, that, that, just like Egypt, I mean uh, uh, Israel, they got out of Egypt. They still had an Egyptian mentality. Yes, they did. Sometimes you can take somebody out of the hood, but that hood stay in them, amen, because they're scared to let it go. When you get in a certain relationship, especially the relationship with God, there are some changes that require uh, to take place because God has feelings. Oh, he do. Go down there to Hebrews chapter 4. Let me show you this. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 15. What does that say? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as like we are, yet Bible without sin. The Bible says that God has feelings. So there are things, let me tell you something, some stuff that we do to God, God do get upset. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Sometimes God do feel some type of way when you turn your back on. When you say, oh, I'm not praying today because this didn't go my way. Or I ain't going to church no more because of that. Or I'm not going to fast no more because of this. Because you, you, we, we, we can't have that, you know, mentality because God feels some type of way. And, and furthermore, the Bible said that God is a jealous God. Yeah. If God is a jealous God, then that means that there is a feeling that he has that says, man, why y'all doing me like this? Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, let me tell you something. God can kill everybody in here when he wants to. Yes, he can. Fix this microphone. Everybody in here, God can, it, it, it don't matter who you are, how long you've been here, God can kill everybody in here, but he lets you stay here for a specific reason. Right? So if God did that for you, why can't you change some of your behaviors for him? Amen. Why we can't say, you know, uh, uh, why can't we, we do certain things, you know, and, and God say, you know, I don't want you to be nasty anymore. Don't have a nasty attitude no more. <laughs> when you come into my house, you know, come with Thanksgiving, be nice to each other. You know, so that requires change. And some people are like, well, that's just the way I am. No, that's not how you are when you come to God. Right. God has feelings. So the way you respond to people, the way you respond to God, God feels some type of way. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Well, you miss prayer in the morning, God feels some type of way about that. Uh oh. Oh Lord, y'all getting quiet now. All right. Amen. When you don't worship Him and praise Him as you should. Amen. When we don't do those things, what happens is God start to feel some type of way. But the way God is, He'll have a feeling towards you, but still say that's mine. Yep. Lord, have mercy. That's true. 
Let me give you this. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Amen. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that, you know, God ain't just throw you away even when you were supposed to do right in a relationship you did wrong? He ain't just throw you away. Je uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse number 1. What does that say? They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Oh, so God talking to Israel, telling them, hey, man, y'all done played the harlot with many lovers. Means that y'all had several different gods. Mm. Yeah. You started dealing with other people while I was married to you. But then he said something, huh? Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. He said, but I still want you to come back because this relationship that we're in. Yes. And I want to tell you this today. Even though or even if you messed up in a relationship with God, God still wants you. You know, that, 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 you know, I don't know about you, but, you know, as a man, and, I, and, I, and, I, and we, we talked about this before, and how women can tolerate uh, way more than the man can when it comes down to cheating. Yep, amen. Oh, Lord, I'm about to get in trouble now. <laughs> a woman can tolerate it. A woman can tolerate, you know, all this stuff that he has, and she still go back to him, still go back to him. If you cheat on a man, he, 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 he'll cut you straight off, completely off. It wasn't nothing to do with you. It wasn't nothing to say to you. That, that's the nature of a man. Amen. Amen. A man is like that. But God, having a man's nature, still said, although you played the harlot, although you slept with other people in our relationship, I still want you to come back to me. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had a few of y'all. That's the type of God we serve. We serve a God that says, you know what? I, I know. Read that scripture again. Read that again. Uh -huh. They say, if a man put away his wife. Now, now you know, now, uh, 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 throughout the scriptures, we, know, we understand that if you're, if you're married, you know, you can't put away your spouse. Amen. Right. Read, uh-huh. If a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, another man's shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? So but that land is, is, that is talking about her. Because the woman is considered the ground. That's right. And if the woman is the ground, there, 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 we know historically and through Bible times, that one ground, which was that woman, was supposed to have one seed in her. That's right. And so if she had more than one seed, then that ground would be considered polluted or defiled. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Mean, that means that she have more than one person. A woman. Amen. Y'all follow me? Amen. All right, read, uh-huh. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Thou hast played the harlot not with just a couple, but played the harlot with many lovers. Talking about Israel. So Israel was out there, out there, <laughs> they was out there cutting up. Had a myriad of, of different lovers. They didn't have, they had all type of different uh, 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 animals, uh, uh, insects. Uh, uh, mountains, all these different things became their lover. And God was, in fact, jealous, but he said something to him. Read, uh-huh. Yet return again to me. Yet return the Lord. unto me again, uh-huh. Saith the Lord. Uh-huh. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been leaned with. So Lying God, with. God want us to love him this much. Now I want you to go down there to John. Because he don't want us just to, uh, I'm sorry, go to Mark chapter 12. Twelve and thirty. Now when you see this scripture, this mean this should mean a lot to you because a lot of us don't love God with our all. Nope. And this is why when changes are to take place, or if you start getting convicted no. about certain things. You don't make those changes because you ain't really in love with God. When you really love God, you make changes that you don't even want to make. That's true. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. There's nobody in here that, you know, when you came out of the womb, you want to do all the right things and want to be saved and give up your whole secular life to start giving yourself to the Lord. Nobody. Because yeah, nobody. you had fun out there in the world. And people, they sit there, a preacher get up there and tell you that he ain't had fun out there in the world. He's lying. Flat out line, because it, it was fun out there because it was a pleasing to the to a pleasing to the flesh. Watch this, read, huh? 
And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart. With all thy what? Heart. Heart. So if I love God with all of my heart, you know, I'll have the same feeling. So if God have a feeling for me, I should have the same feeling towards God. Uh, all of my heart, uh-huh. And with all thy soul, uh-huh. And with all thy mind. See now, I think the problem is we can't really love God with all uh, our mind because we got too much stuff on our mind. Jesus. Amen. Can I tell you something? Everything that we do starts with a thought. Everything that we do in this life, it starts with our mental state, where we are in our mind. Whatever we do, it comes from a thought. So if I'm loving God with my mind, then a lot of things, a lot of situations I won't get into because my mind is in love with God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So when I got brother such and such on my mind, I can't really focus in prayer like I should. Y'all ain't, I know it's going to get quiet. That's why I turn this way. When I turn this way, I know it's going to get quiet out there. <laughs> Amen. If I have such and such and such on my mind, I can't really give God my truly best. And so he says, thou shalt love, thou shalt. And uh, when, whenever you see thou shalt, that's, that's a command. Yeah, this, this is what you must do. Thou shalt, read that again, huh? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart. I want you, now, heart is not talking about that organ in your body. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about the heart. It's no, it, it, it just like, you know, the scripture in uh, John chapter 14, when it, it tells us not to be, not to be troubled. Don't, don't let your heart be troubled. He's not talking about this heart here. He's dealing with the mind, the heart of the mind. So what are they talking about now? And we got a problem here because we have the mind and then we have heart, the heart of the mind. So you don't love with this right here. There's a heart in your mind that you love with. Uh -huh. Lord, Amen. I wish I had somebody. So now we see the, the, the love of our life should start off with God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know why? Because when people start cutting up and doing different things to you, you won't depart from God. Uh -huh. You can let the person go, but you won't let God go because right. God is the number one. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you something, and this is, this, this is what happens. Sometimes, this is why, you know, you got to be careful when you come into church by the way of a relationship. Uh, uh -uh. If you come to church because of this brother, you came to church because of this sister, you got to be careful. And this is why I always preach that you need to fall in love with God first. Because you and that brother stop talking, or you and that sister stop talking, or you, what happens is you leave the church. The church ain't do nothing to you. God ain't do nothing to you. It was that person. So now... I got to love God with my heart first and then that person. So if something happens, I still can be in the same place with this person and praise and worship my God without feeling some type of way. Amen. But what happens is when we put that physical relationship we have with people above the relationship we have with God, what happens is we can't even really fellowship and do things with God because in our mind that person is still there. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. And what happens is now, when you, when you put somebody in the place of God, you create your own wounds. You hurting your own self. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. You hurting yourself because you don't have, let me give you this. Leave your finger there. Go down to the, uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And verse number 33, what does that say? But seek ye first. First, first, first. Seek ye what? First. The what? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto so you. So when we come, when it comes down to God on our list, it should be, he should be what? First. The first. In every aspect of our life. And then if we don't have God first in every aspect of our life, we're still having problems. Amen. Because what happens is, if we have God first in our life and issues take place, we'll go to God. We'll go to God in prayer. We'll try to seek. We'll try to get counsel from the man of God and see what we do for the situation. But if not, if that other relationship is there, that's what we're going to go to. And that don't necessarily mean you get the right counsel. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Go back to Matthew 12. 
Look at somebody said requires a change. It requires a change. When I have a relationship with God. All right. Now, uh, read, uh huh. Love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. All right. Thy heart, thy mind, and thy what? Soul. soul. Uh huh. And with all thy strength. And with all thy what? Strength. strength. Meaning that you know how you put a lot of relation you, you put a lot of time into relationships and it make you tired. Yep. That what he's talking about. He said, "Love God with all I want." Strength. strength. So you know how you you know you be tearing up that road going to see that person. I know ain't nobody ever done that before. You ain't never go take no long travels, tie yourself, wear yourself out because of a relationship. You know, I mean, wore yourself, wore your car out, car barely, it chuckling along, putt, 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 and everything else, because <laughs> all of your strength went into that relationship. So now with God, he's saying, I want you to put all your strength in a relationship with me. Amen. You'd be tired. You, you, you fall asleep on the phone, try to talk and all that because the, the relationship, you... You know, not, hey, hey, hello, you there? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just tired. I done did all of this for this relationship. And then also, there is a mental tired. Yes, sir. My God, Jesus. And certain relationships will wear you out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Especially the ones you ain't supposed to be in. The relationships you're not supposed to be in, that, that, that'll wear you all the way down. Yeah. Talking about strength, you ain't, I mean, no strength. Can't go nowhere. The only thing you can make it to the next day. Amen. So then I got to figure out, well, when it comes down to relationships and relationship statuses, God needs to be that first one. And at that first part, you know, that's that change. Because before, you was used to having somebody else in that slot. So the first thing is, you got to start moving your priorities around. Amen. You know, uh, Bobo can't be that spot. Bobo can't, Bobo can't have that. You used to pray six. You know, see, what happens is, watch this. Six to seven was your talk time with Bobo while he was on his way to work. Yeah. He drove an hour, and that was your time to talk to Bobo on the phone. But now, you know, Church say, hey, listen, we're going to be praying at 6 o'clock. So then you say, man, huh? Bobo or prayer? Bobo or prayer? Can I be honest with some of y'all? Some of y'all take Bobo over prayer. And then some of y'all compromise and say, well, I, I'll give God 30 minutes and then I'll give Bobo to 30. It's getting quiet. I know I'm talking right. So now we got to try to figure out what's more important, our relationship with God or this relationship with this little boy that ain't even my husband. My, 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 my. Is it worth it? Is that relationship, you're not even married and you're making all these sacrifices for this person. You're not even married to this person. You don't make no sacrifices for God. Jesus, it's, you know, I know, Mike, I know when I'm talking good because it get real quiet. Here, feathers falling in here. <laughs> so we put all of our strength in relationships that can't take us past where we are. And then some of y'all joking be messing with people that can't even take you out of what you're in. There's no way, and see, this is why the relationship with God matters because when you have a relationship with God, you can go higher. You choosing somebody you can't even get past where you are. Why be in a relationship with a person you can't even move forward? Why would you be with a man that can't even take you from where you are and take you higher? Amen. He, can't be a, he can't be an example naturally or spiritually. He don't have no natural job or no spirit. Lord, have mercy. I'm about to get in trouble now. He don't, he don't, have, he don't have no natural job or spiritual job. You don't need no man like that that don't work. You don't need no man that don't work in the kingdom. He can't even put no, listen, 
I'm, I'm, let me explain something to y'all young ladies that ain't married yet. If he don't have no relationship with God and he don't have no relationship with no application at no, uh, at no business, he don't need you. You need him. Listen, listen, Bobo should be able to teach you certain things at home. Okay, let me give y'all some Bible because I don't want y'all to look at me like I'm speaking Chinese. Go down there, 1 Corinthians. He's been laying his, laying his ring away for years. Ring still on lay away. Y'all been in a relationship 10 years. Ring still on lay away. Baby, I promise, I'm still working. I, you know, I'm in between jobs. No, you need to be in between. Uh, you know, when you say in between jobs, that means that you have one and going to get another one. Amen. In, in between jobs, you're talking, yeah, I'm in between. No, you ain't in between your jobs. You're just jobless. You unemployed. I don't try to make it like it's special. Hey, listen. I, hey. Amen. Where I got you at? First Corinthians 14. All right, 35, what does that say? And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husband at home. All right, so there are certain comments, and keep reading that, let me, let me explain it, because I want people to think that women can't talk in church and all stuff like that. Read that, read that. I know for it there. is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, when it's talking about this, it's not talking about this, like church here, this is talking about in a, a meeting where all the leaders are, then that woman should ask her husband questions at home. And I'll explain that scripture later. But the point that I'm making is that a husband should have enough information about what's going on to where the wife should be able to ask him. But he ain't got no prayer life, ain't got no, no, no type of spiritual life at all. Ain't no need to you try to marry that person. Because when you're in a relationship, the job of the relationship or for you all is to go a little higher. Now, if he can't teach you how to do anything, he should be able to teach you the scriptures. He should be able to teach you how to be a go-getter and go get that money. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hey Amen. I don't know why women like sorry jokers. I, I don't get it. Y'all talk to me. Y'all can say amen. See, and, and, so, and so when we look at relationship, we got to realize that, you know, when, when I'm going to get in this relationship with God, that change that I have to make play, uh, take place, it's imperative because it aids the relationship. Let me tell you what he did for us. God, go down to John chapter 1. What God did was, because in the Old Testament, you read the Old Testament scriptures and you can read it on your own time. We're not going to go through all of, the, all of the books of the Bible, but you'll see that God was a God that said if he wanted something to happen, if he was upset, he would just start killing folk. Okay. Amen. Amen. They said, oh, God was like that? Yeah. I know only, only God y'all hear about in most churches, oh, God loves you and God appreciates you and God is this and all the good side. But there's a bad side of God. Yes, sir. Amen. You read your Bible, you see there's a bad side of God. God used to be killing, I mean, just killing folk. He said he... There was one guy, he just didn't even like him. He said he just killed him because he didn't like him. Yeah. But then something happened. God said, listen, I, I, I got to go down here in the flesh. Read this, huh? Because everybody was messing up. Since Adam, everybody was messing up. Read, huh? In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All right, so now the Bible said that the Word was with God and the Word was God. Is that right? Amen. Go down to the 14th verse, 1 and 14, what does that say? And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. So God put himself in a body yes. and dwelt on the earth. That's right. And you say, well, why in the world would God do that? Well, he wanted to be able to relate with man. Mm -hmm. Because God couldn't feel what we feel because he was spirit. Go down there to John chapter 4. John 4 and 24, what does that say? God is a spirit. God is a what? A spirit. So the Bible said that God is a spirit. So if God is a spirit and he's not man as we are, 
He had to figure out a way, how can I relate to these people and I'm not them? Mm. So he put himself in a body. Bible says, let's go down into uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and 16. What does that say? And without controversy. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. Uh-huh. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the what? Flesh. So God was placed in a body. And he was placed in a body. So he made a change. He made a change for us. He can't, listen, God came to a place where, hallelujah, he can't even, listen, the Bible says that the heaven of the heavens can't contain him, the earth can't contain him, so he just put a little portion of himself in a body My just God. so he can relate with us. Don't you know that was strange for him? Uh, yes, sir. That was strange for God yeah. to put himself in a body, and the Bible even said, see, and the Bible even talked about how he was tempted as a man. Yeah. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. Now. Go back to the Hebrews chapter 4. Say, oh, God, God, listen, God, when he was in the flesh, amen, you can say whatever you want. God wanted him a girlfriend, too. Okay. Say that. Okay, y'all ain't, okay. Y'all can look funny all that y'all want. I'm going to show you what the Bible says. God, when he, when he was in the flesh, he wanted, he, now, now, he ain't never had one, but he wanted one. My God. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. Okay, let me give you Bible. Matter of fact, let me give you this first, because the Bible called Jesus the last Adam. Yes, sir. Is that right? And then you find that in the book of 2 Corinthians. The Bible said that Jesus was the last Adam. Let me, get, let me show you the, the, the scripture about the first Adam. Let me give you this. Go down into Genesis real quick. I'm going to break this thing down for you. Then we're going to go back up. Amen. Genesis chapter 2. Amen. Amen. All right. And 17, what does that say? Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, uh, 18, what does that say? And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. It is not good for the who? The man. Who was he talking about? Adam. He said it is not good for the man that he should be alone. So then he created a woman to be with him. Read, uh-huh. I will make him and help meet for him. Uh-huh. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. All right, now when you go a little further down, go down to the 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Uh -huh. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone. This is bone of my bone. And flesh of my flesh. Flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. She shall be called what? Woman. Woman. All right. So now we'll see that the first Adam wasn't supposed to be alone, and the last Adam. So that's why when you go down here to Hebrews chapter 4 and 15, now this is why the Bible says that, you know, we are the bride of Christ. Right. Lord, have mercy. That's because God, he don't want to be alone. He want him a woman. Yes. He want a woman to be able to give him glory. He want a woman to be able to give him praises. And this is why the body of Christ is considered a bride. Yes, that's right. Lord, I wish I had the right church with me. Thank you. All right, read. For we have not an high priest. We have not a high, thank you. Uh -huh, read. Which cannot be touched uh -huh. with the feelings of our infirmity, uh -huh. but was in all points All tempted. points. All points. Is that what your Bible say? That's what it says. All points, uh-huh. Tempted like as we are, yet without sin. All right. The Bible said that he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So whatever he was tempted with, it was sinful. Right. Or the nature of sin. Right. Talk about no, not oh, God. No, yeah, oh yeah, God. When he was placed in the flesh, just like you were tempted as a man or tempted as a woman, God had the same problem. Yes, amen. But the Bible said that he didn't sin. Right. Amen. Right. So now we we'll go back. Hallelujah. Go back down there to Matthew 12. Look at somebody said, God requires change in a relationship. All right, read. Uh, Mark, I'm sorry. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart. All thy heart. And with all thy soul. Uh -huh. And with all thy mind. And with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. So this is something that 
we need to, uh, in fact, embrace. And so when we embrace that and find out that in, the res in this relationship with God requires change, what we do also is know that we have to be selfless. Amen. Go down to the Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 and 23. And he said to them, uh -huh. he said to them all, if any man will come after me, if any man will come after me, uh -huh. let him deny himself, let him deny who himself, himself, uh -huh. and take up his cross daily and follow me. So now if we try to get a relationship with God, the number one thing we got to do is do what? Deny ourselves and denying ourselves is a change. Because you're so used to doing whatever you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. But when God comes to, to the picture, you can't do everything you want to do. Yeah. And one thing I realize about people, people do not like to be regulated. Yes, sir. They don't. People don't like rules. Amen. That, and, 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 and that's why we had all these 613 laws. With the children of Israel, but we had to put some restraint on them because they were just out of control because they did exactly what they wanted to do. That's how all the rules came about because people were just doing extra stuff. They said, all right, man, they, they out of control. Let me go ahead and make another, make another law. Okay, they did that. Let me make another law because people got out of hand. Just think about it. If there was no stop signs, if there was no red lights, no yield signs, no swerve signs, all these different indications on the highways, how many accidents would you have? If people can just talk in the middle of a class and the teacher, you know, there's no regulation. They can say whatever they want, say, say whatever they want to the teacher. It would be chaotic. But I can guarantee you, if they didn't have those rules, people would enjoy it. They enjoy getting out to do whatever they want in class. You don't raise your hand in class and just speak out. Everybody, it would just be chaotic. And people wouldn't have a problem with it. People enjoy that they can do whatever they want to do. I want you to go down there to 1 Timothy. Let me show you this. Amen. I hope y'all with me. All right. 1 Timothy. All right. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come, uh-huh. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be lovers of themselves, uh-huh. Covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. So when you look at the society today, everybody do what they love to do and not love God as they should. Amen. Because if they did, we will have more people trying to convert their lives versus trying to convert to something else or do so. And then you can tell because what everyone is doing now when it comes down to spirituality, people are going to this you know, scientific, you know, uh, outdoors type of, it's just me type of religion. Mm. With no restraints, there's no order. There's, you can just do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. That's where, you know, so-called religion is headed. Right. Religion, religion is headed to, because this is a generation we live in. We live with a generation where people don't like to listen. That's right. Jesus. Look at these hard-haired kids. Look at kids. You tell kids to do something, they do the total opposite. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And, and some of y'all adults just as rebellious as the kids. Amen. So what, what happens is, so everybody is leaving a structured, ordered church and going out and establishing a different type of religion. And so what they say now is, I don't need a man to help me be connected to God. 
I don't need a man to help me with studying the scriptures. But if I told you that it was about 40 men that wrote the Bible, then you'll be confused because that's still a man showing you something about God. Oh, my, my. If you read in Genesis, Moses wrote it. Amen. You start reading Gospels, all these different men. You read the book of the Prophets, you read the, the Psalms, you read all these different things. Different men wrote these. And these men, in essence, are still connecting you to their God. That's right. But because people don't like to be structured, people don't want them to instruct them or tell them what to do, you'll go to school, and that if you can't even pick what classes you want to pick. You can pick your degree but you can't choose them classes. And if you do choose the classes, you can't choose what time to say. You, you say, hey, I, well, I, want, I want a 9 o'clock class. Well, only time is available is 11 o'clock. <laughs> so what happens is you still do what that, at, see, now in, in school, they got somebody called an advisor. Yes, and even though they're advising, you can't get your degree without the advice that they give. So they say, hold on, you only can take, you know, this type of class. Well, I want to take Spanish 1 and Spanish 2, and I want to take French, and I want to, listen, you can only take one of them. Well, that ain't what my, well, listen, I'm your advisor, and this is what you're going to do, and if it ain't what, listen, I tried, I got one class left before I graduate, <laughs> and I tried to get out of that class. I said, listen, man, I, I don't need to take no account to do that. They ain't got nothing to do with what my degree is. The, the lady said, well, sir, if you want to graduate, you need to take this class. Yes, so I started thinking about it. I said, well. I do want to graduate, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this class. <laughs> so you have to do what the advisor told you to do. If you make a mistake and run a stop sign, or if you make a mistake and run a light, and if you can't parallel park while you're taking that test to get your driver's license, you ain't going to get no license. Because of that instructor, that instructor giving instructions. So if that instructor is giving you instructions and you don't do what they say, you can't get what you're looking for. As it is when it comes down to God. You need an instructor. Lord, I know it's going to get quiet when I say that, but it's the truth. You need somebody to be able to give you wisdom and counsel. You need a man of God that can connect you to God. Some of the things that's in you that you can't even see, the man of God can see it and pull it out of you. But we, we live in a world now where everybody is diverting and they're leaving from structure and order to just a, I call it willy-nilly. Willy-nilly just means that you do whatever you want to do. Bible says this. Go down there. Well, I got you right now. Go to, uh, go to Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to close here in a second. I don't have my watch on, so I'm not, y'all pray for me. <laughs> All right. 7, at verse number 13. What does that say? Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their end. So there you go. So it's going to be a lot of people that find this road to destruction. So what they do is they, they find this way that just seemed right, and it seemed cool, it seemed yeah. hip. I don't need, I don't have no structures. I can do whatever I want to do. Nobody can't tell me what to do. Nobody can't say that's not right. Or I don't want to hear a message that will convict me. So I'm going to go do what I want. That's right. But that leads to eternal destruction. Listen, there's no way. I, listen, even when I was, even when I was in the world, and I was visiting churches, I still, I wanted to seek counsel. I didn't want to do nothing on my own. I just wanted to say, hey, you think that this is a good idea? I always had some type of mentor that could help me make decisions. I ain't never just jump out there and do certain things. I would always ask to get wisdom from somebody. This, this generation now, they think that they got all the wisdom. Yeah. And what they say, y'all say now, they say they think they got all the sense. That's what they call it now. They got, they got all the sense. But you don't. You need help. You need somebody to guide you. You need somebody to lead you. You need somebody to facilitate, instruct you. Say, listen, that, that, that I don't think that's going to be the right move. And you can't get mad if he say, 
this ain't the right move for you and you really want to do it. I don't need to get mad. I'm tired of Pastor telling me no. <laughs> oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying that. But them no's helped out a lot of folks in here. Some of them knows that I said to some of y'all, I said, Pastor, it's all right if I go do this. And I said, no, nah, I don't think that's the right time to do that. You can see now why I said it ain't the right time for you to do that because further down the line, you probably would, you'd be messed up. Amen. No, yeah, Pastor, I just want to go to this. It's not really a party, but it's with all of my, you know, my friends from college and, you know, we're just having a gathering and all that. I don't think that's a good idea. You go out there, and then you're going to find yourself. They're going to play music. and all, You know how the little kickbacks and all that stuff happen? You're going to be in there first. You're going to be saved, you know, sitting there acting like you're non-social. And then and you're going to be sitting down, and they play your old song. And then foot start, and the shoulders start moving. The next thing you know, you up there swinging from, swaying from side to side. And you say, oh, man, what am I doing? Then you start dropping it like a heart. And say, well, I just, you know, I probably could just get one. Just get one, get, hit this one drink. I ain't gonna get drunk. I'm just gonna hit, you know, because the Bible say, you know, you know, don't be, don't drink with excess and all that. So I, I ain't gonna get drunk because I know my limits. Y'all know y'all, y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. And so you already done, you know, been crossed over into what you used to be. This is why the Bible says this, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17, I think. Second Corinthians five. All right. Is that right? Yes. Second Corinthians five and seventeen. What does that say? Therefore, therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh huh. Old things are passed away. So the old you have passed away. So that's a change. When the old me is gone, that's you know right. how when people used to cut you off on the road, you ready to cuss them out? That ain't you no more. Right. And I know sometimes some of that stuff rise up in you still now. Every now and again it rises. You say, if it rises up, you need to go pray a little, little, little longer. <laughs> say, Pastor, I almost flicked somebody off that cut oh, me off in the, in the, on, the, on the highway. <laughs> Daughter, you need to go pray a little longer. Amen. Because when you get in that relationship, certain things just start falling off. You start changing. Your behavior start to change because of the relationship you are in with God. Now, if you haven't been in a relationship with God this long time, you haven't made no change, you ain't in no relationship. No, sir. They call those situational ships. <laughs> you, don't know, you don't know what, you know, you, you don't know where you are, where you fit in with God. Amen. Amen. Relationship, the root word of relationship is relate. Right. So you have to be able to relate. There has to be some commonalities. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes down to God, what is your commonality with God? Mm -hmm. You say you got a relationship with God. How do you know? How are you relating to him? What changes have you done? What changes have taken place in your life? That's something to think about. And you got people that's in the church that have been there a long time and still the same way. Just because you go to church don't mean you got a relationship with God. Mm -mm. Yeah. Going to church help you get there, but just because you go and occupy a seat does not mean you got a relationship with God. I have conversations with people all the time. People that think that they say, they say, well, me and God, we here. I said, well, how do you know that? Oh, yeah, we, I mean, we talk whenever now, every now and then I need him, man. We talk, we hang out and all stuff like that. Yeah, that's my God. We got a relationship. Ah, you need to learn what a relationship is. And let me tell you this, just because God look out for you every now and again, that don't mean you're in a relationship. That's just the mercy that he gives him. Amen. Bible talks about mercy. Yes, sir. Amen. When you were supposed to die in a car accident and it was the other person sitting beside you, that was the mercy of God. That's it. When you was down to your lowest of low and you got some uh, this random check came in and paid all your bills, that, that, that ain't because you're in a relationship with God. God just had mercy on you. Mercy. We get mercy mixed up with relationships. It's a difference. <laughs> yes, sir. Because if that's the case, everybody that's living out there in the world and they're getting all this glamorous stuff, that means they got a relationship with God. That doesn't mean that. Y'all ain't saying that. 
God's mercy can do certain things. The mercy of God does certain things for you. Now, the relationship, when you get a relationship with God, it's a different thing. Because it's almost like he comes on, and I don't want to say demand, but he comes on demand when you need something. I got such a relationship with God, and a lot of you all have witnessed this. And I don't know who I was with this last time. Something happened, and, and whatever I needed to happen, it happened before I even opened up my mouth. I was talking to somebody about it, and whatever I needed, it happened right then and there because of the relationship with God. That wasn't no mercy. Mercy don't work like that. No, nah, mercy don't work like when you think about something and it already happens or it happens for you. You're thinking to ask for something and it comes to you. That's not mercy. That deals with relationship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away, but whole, all things have become new. So everything yeah. in your life, when you've come into God, that relationship that you have with God, it causes a change and everything's starting to change. Mm -hmm. And don't get upset with yourself when you start train changing for the better. Some of y'all, you, some of y'all in love with the old you. Some of y'all in love with the old ways of you. You know, you know, you done came this far and done got so far in God, and you miss how you used to be. Mm. Amen. You miss that old thug that you used to be. My God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Amen. Let me give you two more scriptures and let you go. Because live folk, let me give you this. Mark chapter 7. Look at somebody and say, your life should not be the same. Your life should not be the same. When you encounter God. You encounter God. Let me tell you this. It, it'll be a problem if you encounter God and stuff don't change. So then, then you got to figure out, like, man, was, was that really God or did I not really get involved? Because when I get involved with God, it, it, it causes changes to take place. Amen. Just like if you grew up in the world, you ain't going to be the same little girl that you was when you was in that house. When you get out there, you're going to start changing. You're going to start changing to whatever the world say or whatever society say you are out there, whatever it look like, whatever it is out there. That's what you'll become. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, they, you know, they got them. Oh, I ain't going to say that. Amen. All right. Go down there to the book. Where I got you at Mark chapter 7. All right, 7 and 6. What did that say? He answered and said unto them, Well hath the science prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So in essence, a lot of people have a good talk about their relationship, but their uh, 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 behaviors have not changed to show that they're in a relationship with God. So God called them hypocrites. He said, man, y'all hypocrites, man. Y'all y'all talking a good game with your mouth, but your heart is far from me because your heart will make you do something different. Right. Your mouth can say anything. People say, oh, I love God, and God is this, and God is my rock, God is my this, and God is my that, and you don't have no relationship with God. Your heart, your heart is far from him. And you don't want to be in a position where you know, you've been going to church all this long time and your heart far from God. I would hate preaching all this long time and then I go to God and say, hold on, hold on, Porter. It, nope, you wasn't really in love with me. Your mouth was saying it, but you weren't really in love with me because there was no changes that you made. There was no sacrifices that you made. Amen. Read, uh-huh. And then I'm going to close on Matthew 7. Read that again. Uh -huh. 7, 6. And then he read answered it. and said unto them, Well hath the science prophesied of you hypocrites, uh -huh. as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is part from me. Uh -huh. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for, for doctrines the commandments of men. So the Bible says that your worship can become vanity, if you're just doing it with your mouth and not with your heart. Oh my God. And that's very, very dangerous where your mouth, you got a relationship by mouth and not by change. <laughs> See, your heart will make you change. Your mouth just talk. Yeah. It, it, don't call you, it, it don't cost you nothing to say what you got to say. Amen. It don't cost you nothing. To, I mean, it, it'll cost you something to lie, but it don't cost you nothing just to say stuff out of your mouth. Amen. And we got too many people that are just saying but not doing. 
And I'm not going to make you go there, but the book of James, it talks about not just being hearers of the word, but being doers. Amen. So when the word, this is why the Bible talks about, you know, it pricked their hearts. In the book of uh, Acts chapter 2, when Peter was preaching, the Bible said that it pricked their hearts. And when it pricked their hearts, they had a change in their mind. They said, man, what in the world do I need to do to be saved? Because something touched them saying, I need a change. When you get touched a certain way, you, get, you, you say, man, I need a change. I remember when I first started getting serious with God, and I started realizing, like, all the stuff that's going on in the world. I started realizing about how, how real death is. I started realizing how real reprobation could be. And then so I had a different encounter when I was worshiping. I started crying out to God, and like, yo, I want to be saved for real. Yes, amen. I don't want to just be out here just, you know, you know, waving my hands and all this. And then at the end of the day, it's not, a, it's not true. So I had a real, I mean, like, I felt God, like really felt and was like, man, I need to change. I got to make sure that my life is lining up with my mouth. And a lot of times we say stuff, but we're not doing it. Amen. So if we're going to say that we're in a relationship with God, there should be some type of change that you showed or displayed. There should be a demonstration. Amen. All right, this is the last scripture, 7th seven, seven chapter of Matthew. And go back to, uh, what was that, 14? Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So he said there's a few people that's going to find real relationship with God. My God. going to be a lot of people out there that think they got one, but don't really have one. I would hate to waste my time talking about I love God and I'm saved and all this stuff like that. And I, I find myself in a way of destruction because I didn't take necessary changes. Right. I didn't do the, the right things to display change. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And this walk is full of mistakes. It's full of people that fall and failure. But get back up and walk into the change. You know, when you go down there to, you know, you at least get into the dressing room. When you go buy something, you go down there and buy an outfit from the store and you want to try it on. You can't try it on out there in the middle, uh, 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 in the middle of the, uh, 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 the store. Mm -mm. You got to go into the changing room. And some of us, we got the clothes, but we ain't never going to the room. Mm. When you got the clothes, that's you talking. Oh, yeah, I, I love God. I love God. I love God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this change. I'm going to make this change. When you go into the room, that's different. Close that door. Shuts everybody out. And you start changing your garment, changing your behavior, changing your ways. Somebody shout hallelujah. You want to be in a position to where you're showing God that you're making the effort. Even if you have a hard time of putting one sleeve on, at least you're in the room. A lot of y'all still on the outside just holding the outfit. Just holding the dress up. You hold it, your mouth is saying that I got this, I got this. But you ain't never going to the dressing room so that you can start the change. I just shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, read, huh? Keep going. 15. Um, beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You See, should. when you got a relationship with God, you can identify false prophets. You'll be able to tell. You'll be able to, you'll be able to spot them from a mile away. Oh, now that, now that right there. <laughs> what he said, man, that ain't, that, ain't, that ain't lined up with the scripture. That's right. Amen. And all them people out there following that woman, Paula White, calling angels. How you, call, how you calling angels from Africa? That's false prophecy. Only angels, if you call an angel that's on the earth from a different country and trying to call, those are demons. Y'all ain't saying that. You should be able to spot that stuff. And then people are just so caught up in the fad of, oh, she got hundreds of thousands of people following her to where their mind can't see 
the, the false message that she's given out. Amen. Amen. The, I mean, just listening to the tongues just sounds demonic. <laughs> Amen. All right, read. Ye shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. Uh -huh. Their displays. Have there been changes taking place? Uh -huh. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Uh -huh. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Good trees produce good fruit. And you can tell a false prophet by the product line. Amen. Amen. You can see what he's producing. These producing ministers that that are uh, young ladies and preachers. That what, what's the, what does a product look like? Mm. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm not trying to boast or brag, but I got some good product. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Some of y'all, when y'all came in here, y'all was, I mean, toe up from the floor up and everywhere, everything else. Y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing? Yeah. Y'all lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> some folk was tore up. Amen. But this gospel was preached to them. And there was a connection made with you all and God and change took place. Amen. You should be glad about that. Amen. You remember you used to roll up. I was listening to some of y'all testimonies the other day. Somebody said, man, I used to roll up on Saturday night and be right in the church halfway high the next day. So we used to party on Saturday nights and just, oh, it was. But they said it was a thing. It was like, you know, Saturday night was just the club day. And then Sunday was just, hey, we, uh, uh, the first day was just, hey, we should just go to church because it was just a, a thing. Mm -hmm. Let's just go hang out at church. Night before, we do everything else. I mean, party like it's, you know, party like it wasn't no tomorrow. And then you wouldn't, you could stay out and party to 6 o'clock in the morning, but you were right in there in Sunday school like this. Mama patting you, oh, girl, wake up. <laughs> you in there? <laughs> Probably still got a hangover. Y'all remember those days when you, you used to, listen, I, I, I did the same thing. I used to hang out on Saturday night, be right in that church. I'm in there playing the keyboard Sunday morning. I'm tired. Still got a little alcohol on my breath. Trying to put mint in my mouth so I can, y'all ain't saying nothing? Y'all ain't saying nothing? But there was a message preached and change took place. So I'm a product of the man of God that preached to me. Yeah. Amen. And I know a lot of y'all looking deep like you ain't never did nothing and all that stuff like that. But I know a lot of y'all in here and I've been through some stuff. Yeah. And not been through. Some of y'all still going through it. But when you jump in that dressing room, say, man, I, I need a closer walk. And see, in them dressing rooms, there ain't that much space in there. God, have mercy. Now the Bible talk about this straight and narrow. It, it gets tighter. Yeah. You get in that dressing room, it gets a little tighter. You can't do everything you want to do in that dressing room. Yeah. All right, read. Come on, I'm going to go. But a corrupt tree brings forth tree? Uh -huh. evil fruit. A, gr a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not for good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Uh -huh. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Uh -huh. Not everyone that saith unto me. I'm going to pay attention to this now. I'm closing. Not everyone that saith unto me. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Uh -huh. Many will say to me in that day. Listen to this. Many people will say during judgment. Uh-huh. Lord, 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 have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy, and in thy name have cast out devils, uh -huh. and in thy name done many wonderful works. Uh -huh. And then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. I never what? I never knew you. I never knew you. <laughs> New comes from the word no. My God. No comes from relationship. And if you don't have a relationship with God, you'll find yourself in a position of, oh, God, I was, the, I was out there leading praise and worship. I was out there leading the prayer. I was out there preaching on the streets. I was doing all this. And God said, hold on. You did do all that, but I didn't know who you was. My God. Jesus. I didn't know you. Because you never took the time out to get to know me. You didn't make the changes. You didn't do. Y'all ain't saying nothing.
the relationship causes God to know you. Amen. Amen. And see, and, 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 and it's crazy because, you know, the Bible talks about knowing no man after the flesh. But he said, knowing us, talk about knowing that spirit, mm. having the right spirit, the behavior that changed you into what you should have been yes. or what you should be. Yes. Amen. And somebody said, I need a real relationship with God. I need a real relationship with God. And you, don't want, you don't want one of them fake ones because I tell you what, it's going to cost you. My God. It's going to cost you. Because these people right here, they was in church. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, go back one, go back one verse, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Prophesied. People were operating in spiritual gifts. Uh-huh. And in thy name have cast out devils. Casting out demons. Uh-huh. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Did wonderful works. And then some, some people say, well, how in the world... Can they cast out devils and do wonderful words if they ain't have a relationship with God? They could. Those are gifts, and those demons got to be subject to the name of God. That's right, amen. Amen. Everyone standing up, closing. The relationship with God matters. Now, you have all these different relationships with whoever you want to have, but at the end of the day, this relationship matters more than any other relationship that you could ever have in your life. Amen. And if you find yourself in a place where you don't even know if you have a relationship with God or not, say, Lord, how? How did I get here? Where am I at? And it's very hard, and I'm not saying that it's easy to make changes or for change to take place. It's not easy, but it's worth it. That's just like when a person goes to the military, they got something called boot camp. Boot camp ain't easy, but it'll make something out of you. So the relationship and your status with God that causes you to make some change, it may hurt at first, but it's worth it. Amen. May seem like a struggle, but it's worth it. That's the only relationship worth past where we are. When you make those changes for God, God can see you, even though, even ones that try, when you're trying, God see your heart and your motive. Because some people do things, you know, just because people are watching, but you got some people that really got a heart to do the right thing. And God can see that. And when we look at change, change ain't always easy. Change is never really easy. It's about adapting to that change. Hallelujah. If you feel like you haven't made those necessary changes and you want to get to that place and aid the relationship you have with God or even had with God, you can come so we can pray for you. And believe in God that he'll move and do the necessary things. And help you with those changes. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hand right where you are. You can come closer. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, hear their hearts, Jesus. Lord, don't let them go astray. Lord, their heart is crying out. 
before you, Lord. Lord, I pray right now, God, that they get in that position to where change could take place. Oh, God, they don't want to be the same. Help them to get back to that place, God, in which you've called and designed that path, Lord. Help right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, don't allow them to leave out of here the same way that they came in, God. Help them have a different mindset, a different thought pattern, a different thought process in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we're sorry if we haven't done the things that you wanted us to do, how you wanted us to do it. God, we're sorry. God, we apologize. Lord, help us. God, we want to do the right things. Oh, God, we want to do right. Even when evil is present, Lord, we want to do the right thing. Aid our relationship. After today, God, don't let it be the same. After today, don't let it be the same, Lord. God, give us that hunger, that thirst, that desire, that burden fire, God, to get back to that place in which you've called and designed for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you for hearing us. Lord, we appreciate you, God, for giving us another chance. Thank you for giving us another chance. Thank you for giving us another chance, God. You could have took us out in the, middle of a, in the middle of us not being what we should be and what we should have been, God. You didn't take us out, but your mercy and your favor encamped around us. And Lord, we're forever indebted and appreciative, God. Oh, God, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, God, we lift you up. We believe this to be done. In your name, Jesus, we thank you.